Hi, my name is Guru Chahal. I'm the VP of product at Avi Networks. And we'll spend some time understanding today why Avi developed a web application firewall, um, what's different about the way we approach the core problem, and then I'll show you a quick demo. Now, for the purposes of this demo, the setup is uh, really clean. And because I want to make the, I want to show you how in a very simple point and click manner, I can define the right set of policies for my application, a base set of you know, good best practices for my application. I can then get immediate feedback from the system as to how that rule set is working. And if it's not working well, then I can auto-tune it in real time uh, to make adjustments that I need for my application. And I'll show this entire closed loop over the next few minutes. So my application is real simple. It's called WAF Demo. Let's look at the application map of this application. Let's open it up. So here's my application. Um, I can access this using the browser right here. So it's on 10, 130, 150, 188. The same application is also on demo.waf.avi.local. So let's reload that as well. Looks great. So I can access it either way. I can use the IP address, I can use the host name. And what I'll show you is I'm going to create a best practice profile, protection profile for this app. And all it says is, uh, please protect against the core rule set that OWASP has defined. And part of that definition, among hundreds and hundreds of other rules, is do not allow access to the application using a numeric IP address, only allow access to the application using demo.waf.ov.local or a DNS entry. So let's go ahead and try and define that. So I've got my two tabs here, one using the IP address, one using the DNS entry, and of course I've got my application. So this is my application, this is the service engine it's running on in, in, uh, in Avi's platform. The engine is really the entity through which the traffic passes and that's where the web application firewall code lives. So that's what is protecting, it sits in front of the application and protects the application. Uh, here's my application server on the back end. Uh, let's click on the WAF application, uh, web demo application itself. So this is my application dashboard. I can see that the average client over the last six hours has taken about 116 milliseconds to come into my data center, spends about 17 milliseconds on my data center, and the application responds in about three milliseconds. So this is sort of the average behavior of the application over the last few minutes. Now, what I'm more interested in is how do I protect this application and then how do I get immediate feedback from the system as to whether it's working or not. So first off, let's protect the application. Click on edit. I have to apply a WAF policy. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, I have specified a policy called demo WAF policy. Let's look at how this policy is actually defined. I've got a name, I've got a profile for the policy, and I've got two modes, detection only, which means I've defined the rule set. Every time the rule set is hit, let me know. However, don't block the traffic, let it through. And that's mostly to gather intelligence about what's going on in my system. Enforcement means uh, block the traffic if it, if it matches the rules. So I've got enforcement turned on. Let's look at the rules. I've got basic core rule set or CRS rules enabled here. I've got uh, application specific exclusions, scanner detections. I've got you know common things like uh, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, uh, protocol validation. Protocol validation, let's go ahead and open that up. And as part of protocol validation are a number of best practices. And one of the best practices, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is allow access to the application only through the DNS entry and not through an IP address. You can see that right here, 92350 rule, which is check if host header is an IP address. If it's an IP address, go ahead and block it. So this is a best practice from OWASP. We make it really easy to just select the OWASP core rule set and say, you know what, protect against this. Now, if you want to define customer po custom policies on top, you can do that before this rule set right up here. You can define the policies, uh, custom policies down here. So a lot of flexibility in the system to define very high fidelity rules that are specific to your enterprise or to the application. In this case, of course, I'm gonna keep things real simple. I just wanna use best practices that are already prevalent in the industry. So we go ahead and turn on that protection, save this, I've, of course, attached it to this application. That policy has been attached to this particular application. Let's go ahead and save that. My application is protected. You'll notice a few things. We are, are a central, central policy management engine. That's what I've configured here. I could have hundreds of web application firewalls spread all over my enterprise, protecting thousands of applications. All I need to say is I want to protect this application, define the policy, attach the policy. 
the controller, which is what I'm logged into now, decides out of the hundreds of WAFs, which exact web application firewall I need to go ahead and configure for this particular application. So it has that mapping internally. It knows this application goes on this particular WAF. It sent the policy, it's already configured. So how do we know that it's actually working? Let's do two things. First off, let's actually look at the proof. I've got my IP address here. I've got my host entry here. Let's go ahead and reload this. Works great, no problem. I was able to reload the page. Let's go ahead back to the IP address. Let's try and reload this guy. Can't access it anymore. Very simple policy, point and click. Best practice says you shouldn't be able to address using an IP address. You're able to attach it to an application by name without having to go to an individual firewall in a particular data center and look at its HA pair and configure all of those policies. So very, very simple to attach this uh, to thousands of applications broadly in your enterprise if you really had to. Let's go back and now figure out, now in this, for the purposes of this demo, obviously I know I turned on this policy, so this is how it should behave, but if you step back for a second, a user out there in your enterprise, an employee, guru, I could, I could have typed that IP address and tried to get to that application and I just got blocked. How do you know that the reason why I was blocked was exactly a particular rule? How do you, how do you know? How do you tell? So for that, we'll go into our log screen which is uh, what I sometimes refer to as Google for network traffic, sort of an experience. It's a very powerful way of analyzing what's really going on with the application. And the way the screen is laid out is we've got connection logs at the bottom. These are incoming connection logs. I've got a search bar. I can search through these connections. That's where the Google for network traffic comparison comes in. And I've got pre-can analytics on the right side, which provide deep uh, analytics on uh, what kind of browsers people are using to come into my application, what kind of um, locations they are coming in from. Um, I can get information on what are the client IP addresses that uh, people are using, where, where, where in the world they're coming from, etc. So a lot of, a lot of detail around the incoming connections. All right, so we access using the numeric IP address, we reload the page, I can't get to the application, beautiful. Now I want to figure out exactly why was this application access blocked. Let's go back to our logs. And right at the top of logs, it will show you that there have been a few 403s, and I can see from my IP address, which is 10.9.0.85, there's a login entry right there, which says get 403. Let's open that up. So I tried to load the page, and I wasn't able to get through. It tells me right here, request ended abnormally. Uh, WAF match happened. There was a WAF rule that matched the transaction. So now let's get to the next layer. What WAF will actually match the transaction. We just scroll down a little bit and you'll see there's some very, very important and interesting pieces of information that it provides to me right away. It says there was a WAF hit. It gives me extreme amount of detail on exactly how much time it took to process this particular transaction and check against this particular rule. And it tells me right here, it was a protocol validation issue. 9.20.350, check if host header is an IP address. So right there tells me this is the rule, this is why it matched, and what are the additional tags that were in this particular rule. So now, this is a situation where I'm an internal employee of the company, I should be allowed to use a 10 dot address if I really want to get to the application. This should be, let's say, uh, you don't want this rule set to be so broad, you do want to add some exceptions. So it's relatively easy to do that adjustment right here. I hit add exceptions. It shows me here's the exception it's suggesting that I add. In my case, I'm going to say, you know what? Almost anybody from 10.9.0.85 slash 24 subnet should be allowed to access. So let's go ahead and even remove the exact URL. I'm going to save this exception, and it's now saved. Let's try that access again. Let's see if this worked. We go back, reload that page, and now I can get to the application. Right. So very, very easy ways of first configuring protection, defining the policies, then determining why exactly that policy is getting hit. And if it's getting hit uh, when it shouldn't have gotten hit, and I want to tune it further, then the ability to add an exception. Let's go back and see where this exception actually got added. Let's hit edit, go back to our policy. We'll click on the policy, demo graph policy. Let's look at the rule set. And if you remember, I'd shown you the protocol validation rule set. Now there's a nice little marker here saying, there is an exclusion list that is configured here that was auto configured in this case. And that exception is right there. It says 10.9.0.85, any URL path, 
please go ahead and let it through. Ignore the rest uh, of this particular rule set. So that exception has been added. Let's go ahead and remove that exception and see what happens. So remove the exception, save that policy change, and we get out, and now we're back to the logs. Let's reload. Reload the screen, and I'm blocked again. Go back to the logs, look at the logs, look for a get request that has been blocked, just right here. Open this up. Now, of course, I could search for this get request up here as well, but in this case, it was right up here. Go down, and again, protocol validation, 923.50, check if host address and IP address. Very easy, very quick ways of define, determine what's going on, and auto tune as needed. Let me show you one last thing before we finish the demo. Within that same application, there is also a WAF analytics screen. And that is in real time looking broadly at the traffic that's coming through and then analyzing what part of that traffic actually hits the rule set and what are the patterns within that rule set that need to be surfaced. So in this case, it's showing me that there's about three matches, two matches, three matches. So the number of matches per second that are happening right now, what percentage of the rules that I've defined. In this case, I'm, I'm generating a whole host of attack vectors. So almost all the rules that I've defined are getting hit in, in some form or the other. It tells me which groups are getting hit most often, which rules are getting hit, what are the tags on the exact rules that are getting hit, which are the top client IP addresses that are generating the traffic that is hitting my WAF rule set? Uh, what are the most common paths in the backend application which are generating WAF hits? So I'm trying to get to various parts of the application and every once in a while I hit the rule set. Which are the most common URLs that are hitting that rule set? What are the common match elements? And then of course our machine learning engine kicks in and picks up the most popular combinations so it right there provides you guidance into uh, what are the combination attacks. So maybe this IP address is using a SQL injection attack really, really commonly, and that's the most common attack that I'm seeing. So all of that information at the tip of your hands, and then again, I can use this information to further tune my rule set. So with that, I'll end this, uh, this demo. Hopefully I was able to convey um, you know, really fundamentally how we've changed how operators and security teams interact with the WAF. It's no longer a black box. It's no longer difficult to configure. It's a very simple interaction, a very intelligent interaction with the web application firewall. Easy to define, point and click, define your rule set. Easy to attach it to any application in the enterprise and then look at the behavior of the rule set, exactly what part of the traffic connects to which rule, um, whether it gets blocked or not. So get that intelligence out of the system in the logging screen itself, and then be able to attach exceptions directly from the logging screen so that I can tune the uh, rule set in real time to match the needs of the application.